Hello everybody, welcome to the Silver Log. Monday is over, it is now the 10th of May, 2011. Silver with a gain of only 5.93%. And I, I really do mean only when we take a look at the volatility that we've been going through. However, the trend for the day was that of an uptrend people were stating that because the margins were going to be going higher again today that the market was going to break down again that uh, obviously did not occur and thanks to uh, brother john i've been able to get some uh, data sets for the margin requirements going back to 2004 Basically, what this means, this is how much you need to have in order to be able to place an order in for 5,000 shares or, or 5,000 ounces. But I really should be saying shares because this whole thing is extremely paper related. Now, to put these into numbers, this is taking us back to 2004. The silver price for a hundred ounces is on the bottom, and the percentage required is at the top. And I, I kind of wonder about this whole quadrillion dollar derivative monster a default that's going on when I see these margin rates as they are. People talked about the 1929 stock market crash because well, of leverage. The whole margin, the whole borrowing of money, the whole creating of fiat currency is totally fraudulent. But as far as the data sets are concerned, the, uh, they hit a little bottom roughly in here in 2006. They started raising margin rates as the market was topping. And as it uh, topped out on here, that's uh, as the market was hit its uh, retracement low. As far as 2008 is concerned, the margin rates got extremely high. The bottom of this point came after the market had topped. The market topped in here with while well, everything was just going normal a lot of it is mentioned within the bear stearns debacle now and and for good reason now when you notice how they kept raising margins as the price was going lower this really made the percentage up here go to much greater percents. I've heard Stellitz Concepts talking about 100%. The overall system of debt and money sucks, but for th this to go to 100%, it would almost collapse the, uh, the, the CME or the Commodity Exchange, but the thing's pretty much collapsing anyway, at least so the signs go. Now, as far as the analysis uh, for the daily chart, not as much volume today, extremely light only a hundred million shares traded which is, is one of the records the only days with uh, m less is well, every single day that's ever had with the exception of this day and pretty much every day in here so the volume did tamper off but obviously still really high finding support here at these this volume weighted average but more importantly, the Fibonacci uh, support, the 38.2% from this high and the breakout lows back in August. So we talked about this 5% day. And when we look at it on this chart, it's, it's really miniature. That thing has been done yet to break this short-term downtrend, short-term downtrend, but nothing has been done to break the long-term uptrend either. In order to break this uh, trend, this down tr downward trend, it needs to break off the 61.8%. If we do end up failing to make the uh, the breakout pattern, making a pattern of higher uh, lows and higher highs, most likely resistance found 
towards the key 39 level. I mentioned 39 is big support. That's still a massive level. It's just now that it crashed below it and it's moving higher, instead of expecting that level to be support now, it's a level that would now be expected to be resistance. It's still bullish to find resistance at 39, as long as it can retrace back, make a higher low, thus have a higher chance of breaking above it. Now, as far as looking at that on the hourly time frame, when we look at the size of these candles in here, it's going a little bit back to regular trading, and it's still got a little bit of a ways to go. But it is making this pattern right now of higher lows, but it's still got a long ways to go. I'm just repeating myself, so let me just go on to the other key topics. One, this trend line has been broken now used as support along the way that once again doesn't mean much because the rate of descent towards the trend line is massive not really hard to see on this chart but when you look at the numbers go from 50 to 32 like this it's pretty uh, extreme and the, the retracement hasn't been much it hasn't even came up to this 38.2 percent level yet it's went from 33 to 38 that's a gain of five or about 15 percent and that doesn't mean much that's how volatile this market is right now as it's entering into the uh, next stage uh, play, basically. For this selling to be a failed move, it needs, it needs to confirm a breakout above the uh, 43 level, and that's still a little ways away. Now, as far as this volatility is concerned, the volatility is slowing down a little bit. We can at least draw a trend line. Uh, down something like that anyway not as much but still in a massive massive volatile state and the big moves are obviously still on their way to come the final chart at least before I go into a little spreadsheet would be the direct or the not the direction I got to do I want to do another direction from the 50 day high and low but probably not to the uh, weekend or so however as far as this one's concerned what I think is of note other than it hasn't broken this trend yet it's really got to go higher to keep it going but what's of note is the move from here to here it's pretty close in here now this doesn't count uh intraday tops and bottoms only lbma closes i don't know what the tops and bottoms were back here i do know that it went even a little bit lower than this because the bottom was 33 and change and this is i think 34 and change at the bottom but as far as some other things, what I want to do is I want to go over the spreadsheet that I haven't really touched in a while. What I did before was I got the price of silver, which is the blue one, in regular nominal terms. The one in purple represents the same chart, but uses a standard deviation for that of 5.5% a year. But what I find most interesting about this is this chart in here. Now this hasn't been updated in a while. I'm going to update this right now, actually, after I finish showing this. It connects this bottom and these key points in here. Parallel lines, same rate of ascent for each one. So what we'll do is we'll go to the data sets. See how far this thing goes back to, because I think it was January of this year. Yeah, January 28th. and. This is the average and median price. So as of January 28th, 2011, the average price silver has traded at from 1968 to here was $6.82, and the median was $5.22. So let me now get some data for silver. We're going to need January 29th and on. So just copy and paste what we need. All right, so there we have it. We have new data. What we'll do is we'll copy and paste everything that I see here. We'll have to go back to the spreadsheets, expand the cells a little bit, and just see which direction we are on that main trend that I was talking about. Because they, they do show a lot of extra different levels for where you are within a bull or bear market. And this is obviously bullish. 
Let me just go and find where these spreadsheets are. Okay, we'll start off with this inflation one, then we'll go to that one there. Obviously, I think there's not much to show here other than this does include the 5,000 point. You see where we are now? We're well, well, well below where we pretty much should be. Like, I said, like I've said before, it's really tough to look at this chart here going back to its 1980 highs at its level when pretty much every other index known to man right now is doing much better. Now, as far as this one's concerned, We'll have to uh, change the data range for it to, uh, it's now running a little bit slow. Maybe it's because I'm recording this, but it does it now and then too. Is it going to auto save on me? Nope. So we'll change out the data ranges. Yeah, there's over, a ton, but pretty much almost, a, well, let's do 11,000. There's a lot of different days on here. That's not what I wanted to do. Now let's just wait for this thing to uh, settle out. It wasn't supposed to do that. I, all I did was put in the number to 11,000. There we go. I want more than 11,000 actually. Let's do 12,000. But it's obviously been breaking through a lot of these different levels. I'm going to have to, I want to change the scaling now here. Change it to say, uh, do the maximum part to say, I don't know, 7,500. Okay, once it fixes, we can see here, this, I was, this is like one level in here. Moves up to a second one on its highs, and then the breakout level... It didn't find resistance at this area in here, but it is, of course, showing signs of a nice breakout. Really nothing too exciting here to report, other than, I guess, what's already exciting. Thank you for watching this video, and have yourself a magnificent day. Bye-bye.